it's an anniversary this week. It was the uh, ten, uh, ten year anniversary of the election of the Rudd Labor government in 2007, which was also the defeat of the uh, Howard uh, government, which had been in power since uh, 1996. And it, it really was the beginning of you know, the decline of Australia. Uh, over the over the ne ne next ten years, uh, I mean, and where, if Rudd basically sold himself, uh, so, sold the Australian people a lie. He said that you know he was a you know fiscal conservative, uh, you know that he'd be uh, the person to carry on the baton from John Howard. Uh, but the signs were uh, there early that you know he were he was going to you know really. Uh, you know, sh shake things up. He was making you know bold promises with the you know the NBN. We were going to have the fastest internet uh, in the world. Then there was the uh, education uh, revolution, uh, which to start off with he would give uh, every high school student uh, uh, a laptop. Then there was you know he was going to sign the Kyoto Protocol, uh, introduce an emissions trading scheme, invest in uh, renewable energy. You know, and this was going to be the he was going to be the person to you know take Australia to the the next step of greatness, and uh, the Australian people, unfortunately, they you know believed his rhetoric and voted for him. And, and ten years later, even though the the Rudd Gillard years, as it turned out, are long gone, you know their legacy is is still with us to this day. Their legacy of uh, turmoil, of chaos and destruction. Is still with us today. Uh, we can never forget the havoc that that John uh, that sorry that that was ruined. John Howard's legacy being ruined by Kevin Rudd. We can never forget. But we've also seen this done before by Labor prime ministers. Let's not forget. After the Menzies era, uh, a fellow by the name of Gough Whitlam uh, got in charge of Australia and really ruined the country. Uh, borrowing money from shady Pakistani businessmen, uh, you know, basic economic stagnation, the works. So pretty much, and this is no uh, effort of hyperbole, every time uh, Labor gets in charge after a golden era, they seem to burn the house down and, uh, you know, destroy everything. Now, uh, Ch uh, Chesterton, a, a great Catholic thinker, said uh, that there is no point of you know, tearing down a fence if you don't know why it was put there. And what happened was Kevin Rudd tore down that fence and he did not know why it was put there. You know, he, he tore down the layers of uh, prosperity, of growth, of faith, of family, of community, of country uh, that were so great in that time. Uh, he completely ruined this country. Uh, he also set the precedent, I believe, for one-term governments across this country. Uh, we saw uh, through him, we saw a hung parliament uh, and uh, we saw, uh, you know, a great period of instability where the Senate was basically controlling uh, all the activities of parliament and nothing was happening. Um, also, also, Kevin Rudd, uh, we can never forget, I babble on about this, the NBN uh, was a complete disaster. The economic stimulus package wrote off the future fund created by John Howard and Peter Costello, completely erased. Uh, you, we cannot forget uh, Kevin Rudd, you know, basically put this country into a mountain of debt when it had a huge, huge surplus. We cannot forget. And we cannot forget that Kevin Rudd, you know, allowed thousands upon thousands of children to drown at sea and, you know, millions of dollars to be made uh, pro through profiteering of uh, people smugglers. Kevin Rudd was a complete disaster. Uh, and it's also, you mentioned the, the ins instability and chaos since... Uh, John Howard in 2007. We haven't had a 
Prime Minister able to serve out a full term. Rudd got cut down in uh, 2010, then Gillard uh, before the 2013 election, Labor went back to Rudd. Then, of course, the, the Liberal Party ended up doing the same thing. They um, uh, tore down a first-term Prime Minister in Tony Abbott, and now uh, Malcolm Turnbull doesn't look like he's going to, to make it uh, uh, through this term as well. So we have the, we've had the you know, revolving door of uh, pr Prime Ministers. It was, it was funny uh, uh, back when John Howard was the Prime Minister, the, the old joke was, you know, it seems like he's going to be Prime Minister forever. Now, now we, you know, we, uh, we, we can't even stick with a Prime Minister uh, for a full term. But you're right that the NBN has been a you know, complete disaster. We know what the NBN is, has done firsthand. Uh, if you watched our live stream last night, you would have known that uh, our stream was cut off at one point and immigration that, well, as we mentioned in our previous discussion, the, the reason why those men are at Manus Island is thanks to, you know, Rudd uh, getting rid of the, the Howard government's strong border protection policy. But also the, uh, the other major um, policy blunder from the Rudd era that we're still uh, paying for is uh, energy. Uh, we're literally paying for it. We're paying, you know, the highest electricity prices in the world and we're not even getting reliable uh, electricity. I mean, uh, you know, here in Victoria, they're, they're already saying that there's a strain on the grid and we haven't even hit peak uh, summer yet. I can still see heat, so I know that the power hasn't gone out. Okay. <laughs> I was just testing there. Uh, well, Ah, whoops, I stuffed that one up. Uh, well, power is inordinately expensive and it is extremely unfortunate uh, what Kevin Rudd has done here. John Howard had the peace of mind not to sign the Kyoto Protocol because India and China did not sign. Therefore, uh, John, sorry, John Howard um, said, you know, we're not going to sign uh, you know, he, he took the common stand approach um, and he did what was right for the nation. We haven't seen a stand-up guy like John Winston Howard uh, since. Uh, but, the, but the ultimate uh, thing here is the fact that these high power prices uh, that were created uh, through the vast regulation of the energy network uh, that, of course, has been blamed on the marketplace from price gouging, uh, uh, just a temerity on these lefties. Um, you know, it was created, obviously, by all that. And what that does is creates a massive, massive strain on manufacturing. Uh, the very people that the Labor Party pretends to uh, uh, represent, uh, they've done thousands of thousands of employees out of manufacturing jobs, out of blue-collar jobs, out of small business jobs. This has been a disastrous decision for workers, uh, for business owners and for families. It's been very costly to our nation. And um, we haven't even mentioned the uh, budget situation. I mean, John Howard left a, and Peter Costello left a budget surplus. And uh, now uh, we've had deficits uh, every year. Our debt is now, uh, federal debt is now close to uh, $600 billion. Uh, we're promised a budget surplus in uh, 2021, but who knows if we'll or, or actually get there. And, and meanwhile, there's, you know, the government programs, uh, you know, social security, uh, health spending. Uh, let, let's not forget that education funding. Don't forget that uh, Gillard in a dying days knocked us, locked us into uh, uh, Gonski uh, funding, even though uh, we've increased funding in education and our standards are slipping. So, you know, the, the spending is... Uh, it is continuing to go up. The debt's continuing to go up, and of course the uh, the ta uh, tax rate. I mean, uh, per personal income taxes are still uh, close to you know fifty uh, percent for the top marginal rate. Yep. And another thing that Gillard did was uh, taking off the cap placing in universities. So there's been a flooding of fully Commonwealth supported. Uh, university placements uh, through people who were stupid.
who are flooding the system. And the thing is, because of the market itself, uh, was completely, you know, it was regulated as to it will allow 1,500 people into this course if there's X amount of jobs. Uh, there is none of that anymore. So that is a problem because it's a there's still that element of regulation into it, um, but it's just allowed government to to get bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, it was it was good when less people could get in, I believe, uh, because you know. Only the brightest and the smartest went to university. Now even a bachelor's degree is worth nothing, you know, after what Gillard did there. Uh, and the economic stimulus package, you, you, I don't believe you mentioned that, Tim. That is uh, what drove the nation into debt. They were spending every school got a new gym. Every school seemed to get a new library. And there were heaps of fraud, waste and abuse uh, through unions, uh, just gouging off the contracts there. And let's not uh, forget the yeah. uh, Pink Bats uh, disaster there, uh, f which caused uh, the death of uh, four uh, electricians and caused uh, 200 uh, house fires. So, yeah, uh, uh, the, uh, it actually, you know, uh, the stimulus package, it actually, you know, caused actual destruction and death. Well, when I said carnage, you might have thought it was a bit hyperbolic, but we're being serious here. The Labor Party left behind carnage. Dead electricians, dead kids, slower internet, high debt, a nation crumbling at its foundations. We can all thank that. Uh, we can all thank Kevin Rudd for that. Uh, so uh, we, we definitely uh, on this show today we, we traced back uh, most of the, the problems we discuss on uh, this show back to its uh, source which yes uh, it, it wasn't uh, so, some people were saying it, uh, it was a, a celebration but uh, for us it's definitely a commiseration 10 years on from Rudd's election victory and I just hope that you know the Australian people uh, they've learnt from this, I hope, and uh, you know, future elections, they they aren't taken in by you know the same bold promises and you know the 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 same uh, uh, sales pitch, and you know we, we we don't have to repeat the same mistakes. Well, the sign of insanity is repeating the same mistakes over and over again, and the Australian voting base is doing that at the moment. We are insane if we are to vote for this same uh, chaos and dysfunction once again. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment, and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.